Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Forest River Salem Cruise Light 273 QB XL. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you around the inside of the RV, then we're going to come back to the outside, show you all around, and then we'll close it all up at the end and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside this new Cruise Light 273 QB. And looking around here, you're going to notice some changes. You're going to see different furniture color. So a little bit uh, lighter, brighter coloring of the RV. And also, it's got a little bit more of a uh, boat look to it. Um, that's one of the things that kind of reminded me of a little bit. Forest River has a boat manufacturing plant as well. And it kind of looks like something they use in their boats. Pretty neat looking, a little different. Also, you'll notice new wood color and trim work and stuff like that as well as we go through the RV. Little accent LED lighting up above the uh, slide there. Now, the unit has the Versa Lounge and basically this sofa slash dinette section can be maneuvered around differently. So the sofa will fold down, make into a bed, if you're not using the dinette and you want an extra little bit of seating to point back toward the TV, the back of the dinette there will pop off and flip around to put the back against the table over there, giving you a little extra seating area. The storage door below the uh, sofa there will flip down and you got some little storage box trays in there. and below the u-shaped dinette section you also have some storage in there as well nice big windows throughout the slide giving you kind of a panoramic look and then you also have a little bit different shade color on the pull down roller shades along with the uh, valances as well you have the coleman air conditioning system ducted air throughout the unit here on the side of the cabinet up here you have your control panel which has your slide in and out button the awning in and out button some light switches water heater gas button and your monitor panel and your water pump as well some overhead cabinets there above the sink area high-rise faucet you do have the little graded sink cover and it has a double bowl sink as well. Traditional RV microwave over there and you have the hood and fan built in as well. And this is another change up. They went to a Dometic gas oven with a three burner cooktop and then a cover that actually flips back and kind of acts as a big backsplash as well. You do have two pull-out, full-extending ball bearing drawers. And you have some storage below the sink area there as well. Now, below those drawers and below that uh, oven, there's two access panels that will come off. So that you can get inside of there and access like the back of your water heater and maybe a water pump, those type of things. So that is some access paneling underneath of there. Now, here is the Everchill 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator. Nice refrigerator, holds a lot of capacity there. And again, it's black, just kind of matching the oven that they have went to. Going on back here to the back, you have your digital thermostat for your air conditioner and your furnace controlling that. And just below that is the propane slash carbon monoxide leak detector. Over here you have your electric box with your breakers and fuses. And then you have a little closet area and a pull-out drawer as well. Now on our left here is going to be our bathroom. We'll pop up a couple pictures of this so you can see this a little bit easier. Um, but you do have the little corner shower area here with ha uh, does have a little sliding vinyl door there 
and it's attached at the top and bottom so it's a little bit uh, a little more functional and does it's a lot less likely than just a curtain to pop out at the bottom and leak while you're trying to shower a little bit of storage area below the sink and a traditional medicine cabinet there and then you also have a little fan up top and a little skylight up above as well so Kind of gets the job done it's not the biggest bathroom but again this isn't the biggest camper either but it does kind of do well for this size of an rv now back here is the little kids room you have bunks on both sides here again we'll pop up a few pictures of this to make this a little easier but it's got kind of an l shape to the bunk sleeping area you have usb charger ports up top there's two one on each side for the bunk area and then you do have USB charger port there. And then you got a little sofa, so during the day you could uh, kick back, relax. The kids can watch some TVs, play a game on a rainy day or whatever. That does flip down, make it to a bed, and there's also some storage underneath of there as well. Now going in here... There is a little TV hookup area right here. You do again have ducted air in here as well. And you have a little hanging closet area or storage area, whatever you want to use it for. Again, guys, be sure to check out Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country. They will definitely save you guys a lot of money on a new RV if you're interested. Electric fireplace down there, which is kind of a fancy electric space heater, but pretty cool feature to have. Just kind of looks nice. You have tons of room up here for a large flat screen TV if you want to. A little bit of storage space on each side of the fireplace there. And then just below, above the fireplace is your stereo. And above that is the electric outlet for the TV to plug into if you wanted to put a TV there and auxiliary inputs for like cable satellite and then the unit is also pre-wired for a uh, Wi-Fi system if you wanted to put something on the roof there's for the King Wi-Fi system there's a uh, wire that runs up to the roof for that and then over here is a little light switch for the LED light above the slide out All vinyl floor throughout the camper. And up here is going to be your master bedroom area here. So you have a shelf area that runs across in between there, so you can store some stuff up there. Hanging closet on both sides as well. And there is a little opening so you could kind of set things back in there or plug things in whatever you want to do back there and the bed does raise up so there is storage under there and you have these little cubby things underneath of here along with a little bit of storage below that it's where you could like slide some shoes or something underneath usb charger ports on both sides of the bed and again, more room here if you wanted to mount a TV on this side. The TV hookups are there on the ceiling, but you could mount something here as well. And both windows in the bedroom do open, so you can get a cross breeze blow through here if you want to open them up. But overall, pretty cool new look for these guys. Um, very affordable, lighter weight style of a bunkhouse family camper here guys uh, we're going to go outside show you around the outside got a cool little outdoor kitchen there uh, and then we're going to come back in i'm going to show you what this all looks like closed and how that works as well so we'll be right back on the outside all right guys we're back on the outside of this new cruise light 273 qb here and we're going to start here in the front section kind of work our way around and then we'll head back inside up front here, you have two 20 pound propane tanks, which does have the hard ABS cover with the flip up lid, so you can access the on off knobs a little bit easier. Power tongue jack with a built in LED light and a manual override in case of an electronic failure. 
lower diamond plate metal across the front. And then you have a smooth two-piece aluminum section across the front with a nice arch roll back to it just to kind of give it a little more wind aerodynamics when you're traveling down the road. Got a nice roll to the front. That also allows them to push the bed forward more and also the storage can come out a little bit more instead of the traditional flat front RV that some brands still do. So a little bit nicer setup there. Uh, two and five sixteenths hitch ball, safety chains, breakaway cable, all that stuff is there, which is all on pretty much every RV. Um, you have a seven way Bargman plug, which controls your lighting and your brakes and turn signals and stuff. Again, pretty much on all the big RVs. Uh, there's a little hook on the side of the frame that the safety chains can attach to for storage purposes. Kind of nice. Um, the power tongue jack also has an adjustable foot pad to give you some extra length if needed. Now this one again is going through the service garage here. Somebody already purchased it and they are getting it all serviced and prepped and ready. But you see the little Blue Ox hitch brackets on there and some of the stuff laying on the floor here. This customer is going with the Blue Ox Sway Pro hitching. Very nice hitching, real easy to adjust on the fly. Um, back in behind there, you can also see it'll come with one deep cycle interstate battery from Couches RV Nation. When you buy from them, it comes from uh, the factory with none. So wherever you do buy from, make sure the dealer at least gives you one. There is room on some of these models to put two if you wanted. There's also a battery disconnect back in behind there. So when you are putting the RV in storage, you can disconnect the battery so it don't just go dead. Now, looking down the side of the RV here, you may notice that it is a little bit different color than the early 21 version. Uh, and that is in part due to texture change of the metal. This is a much smoother metal. It's a little bit more like the front style where the earlier version was a kind of a rough textured metal. It's a little different looking. Um, so they did change that up on the mid-year model change. A little more blue in the graphic there. The baggage door here again has magnetic holders holding it up instead of a plastic clip. So just one less thing to worry about breaking all the time. Uh, just in front of the baggage door, it is pre-wired for a portable solar panel if you wanted to add that. Pretty good size storage compartment. And again, you can kind of see there that roll section, how it rolls out. Just kind of gives it a little bit more storage capacity in there. And then you can also see some of the stuff there for your jack handle, the little uh, socket piece that will go into a drill. If you get you a nice cordless drill, something like this, that you can actually stick right on the end of those jacks, zip them down. And they have the JT strong arms for extra stability there. Power awning with an LED light strip built in and does have the adjustable arms. You have the heavier duty solid step here with adjustable legs, but they come down, touch the ground, and they're able to hold more weight than the traditional hover step. Traditional RV entry door and screen door there. Water heater located right here. Fresh water tank fill up is also located right there next to the water heater. And directly down below, you can see the white handle down there. That is your fresh water tank dump. It's the inch and a half dump, so it will dump out a lot faster than the traditional uh, half inch water line drain that some of them have. Two outdoor speakers, you can see they're lit up blue. And then you got your stove exhaust there just above the window and a nice big window here as well and that window does open dual axle traditional leaf spring axle system furnace exhaust just in front of that uh, or just above that first tire now back here in the back just behind the awning arm you have a cable outlet and an electric outlet right there so if you wanted to put a small table out here or something and plug in a little TV, you could do so. Kind of sit outside on the nighttime, watch the game or whatever might be on while you're kicking back, relaxing by the campfire. 
just below that is the low point water drains, hot and cold. That is again, more for storage or winterization purposes. Just allows you to open those up and let some of the water that's in the water lines kind of drain out. You do have a pretty cool little kitchen back here. So you have a little camp griddle. This is a suburban griddle back here. A little bit of counter space up above. And then you have a little mini fridge. Now the mini fridge is by Everchill and it's strictly an electric refrigerator. So it doesn't work off 12 volt or propane or anything like that. Now one thing just to kind of point out, back there in that corner, you can see those little black lines. That is the check valve for the black water tank flush back up and behind there. It's kind of hidden up in there. But in case that ever goes bad on you, that is where it's located. Just thought I'd let you know where that's at. It's not really something you mess with very often, but it is there. And just to the left of the griddle, there is a spray port. There's a little hose that plugs in right there, hooks up, and you got a little cold water spray port there to spray things down. Gutter tracks run down both sides with the gutter extension ends just to kind of help push water away. The unit has a walkable roof, so you could get up there and walk around. Again, just make sure there's nothing sharp in your shoes or something like that so you don't tear or damage the roof. Um, the roof has a good arch to it, so again, trying to help shed away that water. Now up top, it is pre-wired there in the middle for a observation or backup camera. Now this customer chose to do the backup camera and that is actually already on. The guys have already got that on. You can kind of see it up there. That is the Furion observation camera. So that will run while they're driving down the road and allow them to see what's going on behind them or even just if you're in a campground and you want to turn it on at that point, you can do so. City water and black tank flush are just above the center of the bumper right there. So that's where that all hooks up at. And your cable and satellite inlet is also right there as well, just to the right of that left tail light there. Um, down on to the right of that spare tire along the frame is the gas hookup for that griddle. So it comes right out the back side of that piece right there. And there is a hose, gas hose and stuff that does come with it as well. Over here on this side, you can see your power cord pulls out. So it is a push in, pull out power cord. And just below that is your gray and black tank dump. So everything comes out of one area. And on the back as well, I forgot to mention the bumper, typical four inch square tube bumper, but a lot of people do store a dump hose in there if that's something that you wanted to do. This is an electronic slide out. So you push a button, it goes in and out. This is the in wall slide out by Lippert. You can kind of see the two gray tracks there that kind of just kind of guide it in and out. The unit is also prepped for slide out awning covers, solar slide toppers. If you wanted to do that, there's little brackets on each corner of the slide. And then the gutter track on this side also has an awning track built into it. So you can slide that awning into there and then mount it onto these end pieces and not have to put an extra track or drill extra holes in the RV. Now here you have the other side of the storage compartment. Now we're gonna pop up your weight stickers here. So you're gonna see pop up your gross vehicle weight sticker, which has your production date, VIN number, axle sizes, all that type of stuff on there. But it tells you your gross weight, which is the most the axles and hitch weight hold combined. Um, Next is going to be your unloaded vehicle weight, which basically just tells you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. You're going to see your cargo carrying capacity sticker, which again tells you how much weight you can add into the RV before you max it out and possibly damage things. And then you're going to have your tire sticker pop up there as well. And again, that is basically just kind of telling you your tire size and the proper pressure for the tire. All right, guys, we're going to head back inside, close it all up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back.
All right, guys, we're now back up inside this Cruise Light 273 QB here. And I uh, flipped the Versa Lounge into lounge mode. Just wanted to kind of show you what that looks like. Also flipped down the little storage area and popped out one of those little tubs. So it does come with some multi-tubs there that you've seen earlier in the pictures. But just thought I'd open that up for you. Now, when you're ready to run the room in, the button's right here. So all you got to do is push the button to bring this thing in. Again, it is an electronic slide, so you push a button, it comes in and out. Um, if it does fail electronically for some reason, you could manually do it. It's honestly a little bit of a pain in the butt to do, but it is something that can be done if needed. Um, Lippert, who makes this in-wall slide out, has some really nice, helpful videos on their website to explain that in case it ever does happen to you. That's lci1.com, lci1.com. Now, here you can kind of see what it all looks like in. So when it does come in, it butts up fairly close to that bathroom wall. So if you were to put the table in bed mode, you could or the kids could kind of squeeze back into their bedroom area. It would be possible. Uh, but getting into the bathroom, on the other hand, is not possible. So you would have to bump it out to get to the bathroom for travel purposes. Uh, but you can walk right on around here. You can kind of scoot around and get back there if needed for like the kids room. Now for the adult bedroom area and stuff, that is all right here. So you have full access to just kind of come in right here. No big deal. And then when you're ready to take it out, when you first get to the campground, all you got to do again, hit the button in out mode. And the slide out will start to slide out. Um, one thing too, the slide outs all do have rubber gasket seals and stuff like that around them. Uh, it is a good idea to occasionally spray some treatment on that and just kind of keep them to where they're nice and soft and conditioned and stuff. It's kind of like armor all on the dashboard of your car kind of thing. Just something that you want to take care of every now and then and just kind of make it last a lot longer. But real simple, in and out situation there. Again, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Check out Couches RV Nation, guys. They will save you a ton of money.